So we'll start the lesson today with just a reminder of your of the octet rule just applying this. So if you could just have a look at the screen and you'll see there that there's a question to answer. Explain whether beryllium in the polymeric structure obeys the octet rule. So if you could jot down your answer to that. And next, if you could explain whether chlorine in the polymeric structure obeys the octet rule. I'll just show, make sure you can see one chlorine atom there. Okay, next, you don't need to see the, the structure for this. Um, for a three, explain what is meant by coordinate bonds. Okay, and um, we haven't got to that point yet. Well, you might know it anyway. I haven't done it, but let's see if you know what four is. I'll show you the polymeric structure again. Why it has a high melting point. Okay, so the answers to those. Right, so this is from June 2015. You can probably see the tabs at the top there. Um, we've got so answers are, no, beryllium does not obey the octet rule. There are six electrons in the outer shell or the valence shell. Um, chlorine does because there are eight electrons in the outer shell. Um, just check, this is the old, this is an old paper. So they, have, they were always very inconsistent with their definition. So remember a coordinate bond is a shared pair of electrons with both electrons supplied by one atom. Yeah, it's probably okay what they've written there. Okay, uh, th this is now part four. It actually should really be the strong covalent bonds require a lot of energy to break. It's not really clear. Their structure wasn't clear enough. Okay, so actually we'll not worry about that. I would have thought just by their structure, you're talking about strong covalent bonds. Um, yeah, ignore the dipole dipole actually. I wish I hadn't asked that one now. That actually wouldn't have dipole dipole bonds. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, van der Waals forces, yes, but dipole dipole bonds, no. Right, so we're going to move on now to BSE Pure again. So if you can look at it. Um, page, what was on page 10? So turn to your notes on page 10. Okay, so that was the octet rule, just to remind. Oh, yes. Uh, just a reminder of what the octet rule is. Don't forget about it. It's not atoms getting a full outer shell, or it's it's when reacting an atom tends to gain lose or share electrons to achieve eight in outer shell. Okay, so hopefully, I'm sure we'll see that again. Um, but we're going to move on to VS, EPR, and the shapes of molecules and ions. Now, just if you look at the specification points, Right, so demonstrate understanding that the shape of the molecular ion is determined by the repulsion between the electron pair surrounding a central atom. So that's really just a statement. Um, molecules, the atoms in a molecular molecular ion adopt a shape so that that minimizes repulsion between electron pairs. That's what they do. Okay, so that dominates what shape you'll see, the molecular geometry. We're going to look at valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. To explain the shapes of molecules. So we're focusing first on shapes of molecules and we will introduce the idea of bond angles um, later on. So I want you just to focus on shapes at the moment now uh, and make sure that you get a handle on the shapes, the names of them, what type of, what situations 
um, give rise to each of the shapes. So just to remind you of that, now we're going to go down. We did that yesterday. And what we're going to do here is I actually am going to skip, I might have a look at this. I'm not going to spend long on it because it is, it is this way of structuring these answers, but we're not really at that stage yet. Okay, so if you had, there's a question, if you had the shape of the molecule of methane, explain why it adopts this shape. So the shape you would just state as tetrahedral, and you would say it adopts the shape because there are four electron pairs um, and they repel each other. They move as far apart as, as, um, as possible and to minimize repulsion. Sorry, so what I got here, it's four, and I, they are bonding pairs. So I would encourage you to, to say four electron pairs, all bonding pairs or whatever it is. And they repel each other and to move as far apart as possible to minimize repulsion. Okay, we'll come back to that. Um, now, what you're going to do is this. So I have this activity, but I'm going to adopt, adapt it slightly. Okay, um, work the shape. Showing bot now, we're not going to do that just at the moment. So if you just leave that, I'm going to score that out for the moment. Maybe the shape of the molecules and ions we're going to focus on today because you really need to get that. If we introduce the bond angles now, I think you'll be a bit overwhelmed with information. So what I'd like you to do is, I have it somewhere, is you're going to draw, let me just state the draw that you have in hand. So if you start the activity, um, oh yes, I want you to start with this, draw diagrams for those molecules. Now I'm going to switch over to the visualizer, so I'll show you how I want you to lay this out. Um, Okay, so hopefully you can see that, right, in that script, my mistakes. So I want you to do a sort of diagram, a kind of just an organizer, um, the way that it was very similar to the one that was done earlier on page 10 and 11. Okay, so I just want you to do a table. So for each of the substances, right, so you've got methane, sulfur hexafluoride, beryllium chloride, ammonia, boron trifluoride, xenon tetrafluoride, phosphorus hex pentafluoride, uh, sulfur dioxide water, sulfur tetrafluoride, and iodine trichloride. And you're going to draw the Lewis structures, whatever. I, I, I know most of you are still using the, the uh, shells, showing the shells. That's absolutely fine, right? So whatever way you want to do it. But what you want to do here is like decide the number, count the number of electron shells, around, electron pairs around the central atom. Decide whether they're bonding or pairs. And then I want you to start looking at the uh, table, use the table on page 11 and 12 to name the shape. So the shape, really, I know those of you who are better at English than I am, you'll know that really we're describing a shape here. This is an adjective, uh, not a noun. So the shape is a tetrahedron. So I suppose what we're really describing here is the molecular geometry. But I mean, they're not going to really care whether you talk about nouns or adjectives. So we should say tetrahedron, although I rarely see that. But it's molecular geometry is tetrahedral, octahedral, and so on. So it's up to you how you use it. I'm not very consistent in this, so I should really have put trigonal pyramidal if I'm going to be consistent. And here you see I've said trigonal planar instead of a trigonal plane. OK, so just to be aware of that, it doesn't really matter. I would stick with probably the adjective. Um, describing the molecular geometry rather than naming the shape. Okay, so what I want you to do is just complete that. So you can see there what I've done. So for sulfur hexafluoride, um, is it lazy? Just did the line diagram. So you've got six electron pairs. They're all bonding pairs. And if you look at table on ten um, between page ten and twelve, you'll see that that means it has an octahedral molecular geometry. So if you could do that for all of those. All of these here right it's quite a lot of work okay so this will take you 
I would say, most of the class to do. It's only a single period today. So that's what I want you to do. I will have posted the answers so you can check, right? Um, <clears throat> and you'll have to finish this for homework. I also want you to include these. Top of page 14. Right, there's some slightly more difficult ones where the ions, molecular ions as well. So just all of those you need to put, and I've ended up with, uh, I think I managed to squish it all onto two pages of A4. Um, but key thing here is that you draw them and allocate them a, a geometry, a molecular geometry. So that's what I want you to do. Right, the one thing, um, Will that take the whole class? Yes, I think it will. OK, so practice, practice, practice. What I want you to do is make sure you learn these shapes. So the shapes are, I've listed some of them here. I think all the ones you need to know. Um, you've got linear, bent or V-shaped, trigonal planar, tetrahedral, square planar, trigonal planar, octahedral, trigonal bipyramidal, and square pyramid. I've sneaked that in. I don't think that's listed on the spec um, as it will come up if you have six electron pairs five are bonding and one is lone so and i don't think it's on my sheet either um t-shaped is on that i don't have here so we'll have to add t-shaped as well okay so just maybe even if you have a list and you can even try to start to allocate these shapes. So you're going to have to recognize these shapes when you know the number of electron pairs and the type of electron pairs of. OK, so that's what you're doing. Tuesday, period eight. Thank you.